Hey there guys, how's it going? I've often wondered, is it actually worth investing into a very large aperture, very long focal length telescope, like the one that I've just bought, the Celestron Edge HD 11, when you want to shoot these more traditionally reserved for that type of instrument, very small targets such as planetary nebula, smaller galaxies, or even regions of other larger nebulae, the kind of thing that really interests me. Now, Luckily for me, I'm able to make comparisons. I've got two peers in my observatory and we're going to make use of that tonight. So let's take a look at what we're actually going to be comparing. So as you can see on the screen right here, I'm just using a really great website that you should check out yourself, Astronomy Tools, and this is their field of view calculator. So I've input all the details from the two telescopes that I'm going to be comparing simultaneously. Tonight, uh, throughout the course of this one, we're shooting M57 in both cases, Purely in broadband, uh, just with the UV IR cut filter, so that neither uh, telescope is, you know, advantaged or disadvantaged. Do this, they're shooting kind of same wavelengths. And I'll tell you exactly what we're actually looking at. So the blue box, the slightly, very slightly larger field of view, is actually the full frame camera, the Player One Zeus IMX455, paired up with the Celestron Edge HD. 11 it is native 2800 millimeters of focal length and f10 so that's setup number one setup number two the green box is actually a much more moderately sized piece of equipment so it's the ascar 120 apo paired with the play one uranus c so that's an imx 585 based camera and as you can see the field of view that results from both of these two combinations is actually staggeringly similar given the huge differences in focal lengths involved in this. And that's, you know, down to the size of those two sensors, basically. Um, now, in terms of actual sampling ratios on these, the Edge HD is sampling the sky much more finely. I'm shooting in both cases at bin one on these two. Uh, so the blue box, the Edge HD 11 is sampling at 0 0.28 arcseconds per pixel, Whereas much more reasonably, the green box is sampling at 0 0.7 arc seconds per pixel. Now, the common knowledge and approach always used to be, and I think it's still fair advice now, but it probably is due a little bit of revision. Now we've got access to these AI powered tools. It used to be one arc second per pixel is what you should aim for. I really firmly believe you should aim for a little bit below that these days though especially if you are using something like blur exterminator otherwise i'd say it probably still holds completely true now if we just switch over a, uh, a moment and we take a look at the imaging plan tonight so uh, just as you can see i'm using nina two minute long exposures i could have gone shorter for this of course this is a very bright target but nothing if you look at the histogram is being clipped and if you just view the readouts too, I think the very brightest regions of this are this uh, intersection right here between the hydrogen alpha and the oxygen in the middle. And I'm seeing mean values up to 4,700, nearly 4,800 or so at its absolute brightest. So even though it looks bright on the screen, that's simply because it's just being screen stretched and nothing's actually getting baked on this. You know what I mean? It's, it's all well preserved and it should stack up really well and look nice so we'll see how it goes and uh, on to the next bit hey there guys well we're more than a few days on now uh, i actually had to ditch that first session and go ahead and try to make another capture on another night and i'd just like to say thank you to everybody who joined me for that live stream you guys made it a whole lot more fun than it otherwise would have been just watching subs of m57 roll in so now i'm going to talk you through what exactly we've got lined up for you right now and kind of outline everything so the same parameters for the experiment were of course observed all the data was taken on the same night at the same time so same conditions obviously the rigs are exactly as i described earlier in the video and you probably know that there are three little comparisons going on here rather than the expected two and that's because i decided to put also a drizzled two times version of the ascar 120 data in order to try and lessen the gap in sampling ratio between the ASCAR 120 at 0.7 arc seconds per pixel and the Edge HD 11 at 0.28. So the right hand side drizzled two times should roughly approximate 0.35 arc seconds per pixel. Now, there are a few things obviously to observe at this point. 
we can't really compare M57 when it's this bright. This is just for a reason, so we can look at stars. We will be taking a look at overall detail a little bit later on, as you can see in a uh, further part of the comparison. Before we do that, uh, I also do want to just say, obviously, this is just a for fun comparison. It's overall a bit silly, you know what I mean? We are comparing hugely different telescopes in terms of size and value and overall usability really um but still i thought it might be fun and i had probably really enjoyed seeing this before i got the telescopes to test myself and i hope that you're going to enjoy it too um so anyway all that said i've gone on quite long enough let's get on with this so what we're looking at in this case is just data with flats and bias uh, in one hour in each case i took the absolute best frames handpicked uh, in all cases for this. So I sifted through above two hours worth of data, got it down to the best single hour. And that's what we're looking at for all of these comparisons. And as you can see, star shapes and sizes in the completely unedited images, pretty damn good, all things considered. Uh, so even though we had a very average night, I think we made the absolute most of it. With the technique that we applied, uh, maybe we could have gone a little bit better with lucky imaging, but then we'd have lost some signal on the fainter stuff. Swings and roundabouts, you know what I mean? So at this point, without any deconvolution applied whatsoever, you can note that we are just about starting to split this into what looks like a, a pair of course there, and then I very slightly get into brightenings of star centroids there beneath and that is what we would expect to see on this thing as that is indeed a group of actually five stars but the uh, the last two are very hard to split and once we apply ai powered deconvolution in the form of blur exterminator sure enough it is cleanly split into a group of four and you'll notice that it hasn't done that on either of the cases on the right not knocking the Ascar 120 i think it's a wonderful telescope but as I've said, we really are playing the Edge HD at its own game here. You know what I mean? This is where its strengths really lie, going after these tiny, tiny little targets. Um, it'd kind of really suck if it didn't excel at this kind of thing, given the asking price uh, and overall size and lack of usability of the thing. Now, um, you will know there is a large difference in terms of perceived noise and it really is just due to that image scale uh indeed because we're viewing the uh, m57 nebula at two to one on the left hand side for m57 we're having to view it at four to one on the middle so of course it looks a lot more noisy if we zoomed up this background noise on the edge hd11 up to four to one to match the middle all of a sudden that background noise value looks much more similar. It is still a little uh, cleaner on the left-hand shot, I would say. And uh, more on that in a moment. But hopefully you can see the difference uh, right there. Now, when it comes to uh, actual real faint stuff, so if I just zoom out this view very slightly, sorry for the interruptions as I uh, do this. You can see on the Edge HD11, I do hope this is coming across for you on YouTube, I can trace out easily the first of those faint extensions there. I can trace it with my mouse pointer comfortably. On the Ascar 120, it's a little bit lost in the noise on the, uh, the middle shot. So even though we're looking at F10 versus F7, we actually aren't really seeing the, uh, the expected difference um, on this thing. We're not certainly seeing not two times faster photographic speed like you'd expect on a camera lens or something like that. Uh, so there's definitely more at play than just F ratio. I think the aperture on the left hand shot has really, really helped it out. Um, as we get a little bit closer and let's say if we just compare again that group of stars down there at a similar level of zoom if we possibly can. Um, yeah. You see, I don't think any amount of drizzling and things like that is ever going to recover that amount of resolution. And that's fine. Um, I think, I'm sure we can forgive the uh, the little Ascar 120 for that. I think it, it does absolutely wonderfully for a 5-inch Apo. It's just a little bit outgunned for this kind of thing. Uh, you will note, however, the drizzling has done a really nice job of keeping those star profiles looking really pretty. Uh, at this point, uh, obviously this is 
super duper pixel PP. I want to point that out. Uh, it is ridiculous levels of zoom we're looking at, but at this point, it starts looking a little bit like they're made out of Lego on the middle image. But on the right, they're nicely preserved. Do you know what I mean? The, the clean little globs of light, and on the left, obviously, they're still very clean. Um, if we move on one more step now, by the way, to Noise Exterminator, and I just want to say, I'm going to put this, uh, <laughs> obviously, quick one out there. Support from you guys has been absolutely incredible with those affiliate links. A huge, huge thank you to everybody who's used those. Uh, you really are helping me out so much every single month. So uh, very genuinely, thank you for your support through those. And if you are on the fence about, you know, using these tools, uh, Blur Exterminator, Noise Exterminator, Star Exterminator, that thing, download the trials, give them a go. Um, if you're in the, you know, if you're in the position and you're looking at purchasing tools like that, these are the best, uh, and that is my very honest recommendation to you. I think they are unbeatable uh, when it comes to the jobs that they're meant to do. Um, I could go on at extreme length about these, but like I say, uh, I think a picture says a thousand words. Look at the difference, you know, between before and after. It's all there. Try it out on your own data. See what you think. For me, there was absolutely no going back. Well, there it is. Uh, huge, huge difference, I would say. Now, if we just take a quick look at this small background galaxy over here. Between all three, actually not that much in it. I think it's more cleanly separated from the background on the Edge HD 11 image. That said, I think there's a little bit more overall background glow around it. On the F7 image from the Ascar 120, but uh, I, I do prefer the left-hand image, but that's because I already own all of these scopes, do you know what I mean? So I don't really have a horse in the race. It doesn't matter to me so much the outcome. Now, um, if we move on really quickly, I'll uh, close down this part of the comparison. We can take a look, actually, at a slightly more processed version of things. Uh, once again, everything's in the same order, so Edge HD 11 on the left. Uranus C and Ascar 120 in the middle, and then that same data drizzled two times on the right. Uh, we're seeing that same sort of thing. So the star profiles vastly improved through drizzling. And also, I think you'll be able to see this even through YouTube's compression. There are large differences in terms of about the amount of available detail. I think there is plainly more to see on the, the right hand image than the middle image. Um, so drizzling. If you're trying to do this kind of task with a shorter focal length instrument like this, like 860, let's say, absolutely worth your time. Do drizzle uh, in that case. Now, I think it's also fair to say that the Edge HD 11 knocks the other one's socks off completely. I think there is a couple of times more available detail on the Edge HD 11 image. You know, it, from where I'm sitting, it's not really even close. Um, but that's not to say that the Ascar has done bad, because it, it hasn't. It's just when viewed in context with this image on the left, which is really rather sharp. Um, as I've said before, it's, it's kind of astounded me as the Edge HD 11 already, uh, with what it's able to show with such short integrations. So I think great things probably coming in the future from this thing, as long as I can get enough time to actually use it if the skies ever properly clear up. But um, fine details, rills and valleys and little knots in the nebulosity are popping up all over the place on this thing. And this isn't even a properly processed image. It's just very basic stuff that I've applied to this. Um, I wouldn't stop at this and just say, you know, hit save. I'd certainly take it on further, but I wanted to keep things as equal as I possibly could in all three cases, and so that's why I've stopped for the comparison here. And I hope that you guys can see the difference between these three. And if we just take a look at that little background galaxy once again, so, you know, obviously it's much more faintly shown in this comparison. But there it is on all three. The nearby stars, obviously cleanly split right there on the Edge HD 11 image. Cleanly split as well on the drizzled image. But the Ascar 120 non-drizzled image looks a little bit like a snowman. So once again, I think proof positive that the, you know, the, the dithering and the drizzling, well worth it. You should always be dithering anyway, but the, the drizzling especially 
when trying to capture the absolute most resolution. It's a must when you're uh, anywhere near that sort of sampling ratio. So uh, I think that's a, an interesting enough comparison. One last little look at M57 just while I uh, wrap things up. And I'd like to say, of course, and uh, as I always say, a huge thank you guys for the amount of support that you have shown. Uh, you're absolutely fantastic. And I couldn't be doing this without your help. So very genuinely, and I mean this, Thank you so much for all that you do. I realize this has gone on way longer than I actually expected it to, but I feel like there's been an awful lot to say about this thing. I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. I'll absolutely read every single comment. Uh, let me know. Let me know what you think. And if you enjoyed this, do leave the video a thumbs up as it really helps out too. Um, again, affiliate links down below if you want to try out these AI-powered tools. Or yourself, I give them 10 out of 10 full recommendation. They are really good. See what you think uh, for yourselves if you don't already have them. And a huge thanks to those you do and have used those links. I'm going to give up talking now. I'll leave you at that. Thanks so much for watching. Clear skies.